Joey, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Rhodes? Where we're going, we don't need Rhodes. No. I am your father. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. You're listening to After the Ending, the only film podcast where we tell you what happens after the ending of your favorite films. And now, here are your hosts, Mike Spring and Phil Edwards. All right. Hello again. We are back as promised. If you're watching live, it's only been a break of uh, hopefully a minute or two. If you're watching after the liveness is over, uh, <laughs> it really depends on how long you want to take a break from us. So uh, welcome back. This is our B-plot episode uh, where we're going to do our top five and our ATE recommends. So uh, thanks for coming back. Uh, yeah, let's good to see go. you all returning. And uh, if you wanted to know what we, we've just been talking about Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, and Zack Snyder's Justice League. So if you go find the A-plus, that's us talking about those films. Yep. All right. So let's um, let's uh, well, let's get into it, right? Why, no reason to waste time. Uh, let's talk about our top five shows we binged during the pandemic. So uh, for, for those of you who are have never listened to our podcast before, our After the Ending podcast, we had regular episodes and we had mini episodes. And our mini episodes, we would always do a top five list of related, you know, top five movies and this, top five characters, five top five this and that. And so this is a, a time-honored tradition that was very, very popular for us. People liked our top five episodes a lot. Uh, so we decided to make it a regular feature. Uh, and so, of course, what better way to kick it off now with the top five shows we binged during the pandemic, because I think most people can probably relate to that, right? Yeah, very true. For those of you not aware, there's been a global pandemic. <laughs> which, Tell us about it, Phil. I haven't heard which, much about this. I know it's, it's been absolutely dreadful, obviously, but there's also been uh, lots of time where we couldn't go out. Or, so we, as we've all, some people may have improved themselves by learning a new language, a new skill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, myself and probably lots of other people have also spent that time wisely by just watching the hell out of Netflix, Amazon, uh, Arrow, and whatever other streaming services out there. Yeah, yeah, that's been uh, that's been the order of the day, right? We've been uh, we've been binge watching a lot of TV shows, gotten through some some series and all kinds of you know uh, mini series and, and specials and you know some movies too and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so we thought, hey, what better way to bring things back than by tying in directly to what's kept us away for so long and catching you up on what we've been watching since uh, since you last heard from us? So we're gonna do our top five shows we binged during the pandemic. Yeah, so hopefully there'll be some good suggestions. And as always, you can always comment on things you've been watching. Do you want to share that so we can spread the wealth of all the wonderful long-form television shows that are out there? That's right. We are living in a golden age of television. We certainly are. Do you want to kick things off then? Yeah, sure. Um, so I actually have an honorable mention, and I, I didn't do that just to cheat. Uh, the reason why I did that is because there's two shows that we binged that were great and we loved, and they were really, really awesome to help with the pandemic. Um, but they are shows that are older and that we had seen before, and we were re-watching them. Um, I have a 14-year-old a daughter at home. She has been getting into a lot of shows. She's a big TV junkie like me and my wife. And so we re-watched a couple of classics with her um, that she had never seen, but we had. Had. So that's why they're an honorable mention. Everything else I'm going to mention is all new stuff or new to us at least. So yeah. those two are Scrubs and The Big Bang Theory. Uh, we watched all nine seasons of Scrubs. Love it. One of the greatest sitcoms of all time. We've yes. been rewatching Big Bang Theory. I think we're actually in season eight right now. Um, it's always a big fan of The Big Bang Theory. It, it, great shows, but I didn't want to give them uh, their own births because um, again, they've been around for a long time. We had already watched them. I already knew I loved them, but I didn't want to not uh, you know, mention them because we have we did watch them, and that's a lot of time we spend watching those shows. So my number five uh, is actually a show that I'm gonna guess almost no one has heard of, at least on my side of the pond, uh, and it is actually an Australian drama called Playing for Keeps. Um, and so uh, my wife and I got into some Australian shows a couple of years ago through a show called A Place to Call Home, which is this. Uh, amazing drama very dramatic drama if you will um and it made me realize like hey these aussies they know what they're doing with the with good television so came across the show playing for keeps that i i uh i got the dvd to review and basically it is um 
what's that show footballers wives it's kind of like that but with rugby and it's from australia it's it's like five women who are either dating or engaged to or married to uh rugby players who are basically big celebrities in australia and it's their life dealing with like the fame and the money and the infidelity and there's a there's a in the first episode, a character dies. So there's sort of a little bit of a mystery subplot that goes through the whole thing. Um, and it was just really, really fun. Uh, great cast, all very uh, easy on the eyes. Um, nice kind of soap opera-y elements, but but not in a cheesy way. Had a lot of good humor to it, as well as a lot of drama. Like I said, the mystery is kind of fun. Um, it's just like, if you like stuff like Desperate Housewives or things like that, that are kind of like a blend of multiple genres, yeah, uh, yeah. this is a really good one. Now, you can't stream it, unfortunately. At least not, not, you can stream it through Acorn TV, which is not how I watched it. We watched it on... Um, uh, on DVD, but uh, it's really great. And if you have the the opportunity to check it out, I, I highly I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. So it's called Playing for Keeps. Uh, we watched the first episode, which was ten uh, first season, which was ten episodes, um, and it was it was a lot of fun. So that's my number five. Cool. I know you do like your Australian soaps, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so, soap operas, I suppose, especially with the whole lockdown and pandemic, it's well, it's like lo lots of these shows. Lots of them, it's, it becomes like a comfort, doesn't it? You just stand up. It's, it's yeah, people yeah. living their lives and doing stuff. Getting, getting outside, which is nice right. to see. Yeah. And, you know, they're not cheesy soap operas like you think of, like, daytime TV. You know, it was, this is a high-quality production with good acting, good writing. You know, it was just – it's just a, you know, a melodrama, but, again, with some comedy and stuff. But it's not like when you think of soap opera and you think of, like, these cheesy daytime shows. That's not the kind of thing that it, that it is. You know, it's, it is much, much more high-quality than that. Okay, good stuff. Okay, well, I've got a couple of honorable mentions as well. Awesome. I've been watched uh, – all seasons of Community again because I love that show. Cool. I mean, it's one of the, the funniest, well, especially the earlier season, season two in particular. It's just absolutely hilarious. Dan Harmon and everybody, just if you haven't seen it, check it out because it's so many running jokes. There's so many. Even now, I've seen it. I've watched it through a few times, but there's even now I keep seeing jokes or notes and things I hadn't seen before. But that was good to watch again. There was also uh, The Expanse. Went mm -hmm. through that again. I still need to watch the most recent series, but that's I haven't got to that yet because of still binge watching some of the shows which are going to be mentioned on this list as well. Uh, what else was that? Qu Queen's Gambit, that was another goal, but that didn't quite make my list. But uh, my number five is uh, Ajin Demi-Human, which is uh, an anime, Japanese anime, uh, which I didn't really know much about, but a guy on Twitter whose handle I had remembered and had written down, <laughs> it is not here before me, so I apologize, and I will find that out and put it on somewhere. Uh, but he, he recommended to me, but it's about a young lad who... Uh, lives in Japan, and we hear about these things called ajin, or which are demi-human, they're looked down upon when they do arrive. But basically what it means is uh, an ajin is someone who can't die, but they don't know they're an ajin until they die for the first time. So Ooh. in this case, the main character we follow, he gets hit by a bus, and we think he's dead, but then he stands up, and everybody's looking at him horrified, and he's got these weird black mist rising off him that only he can see. Because if you're an ajin, you also have this black ghost, which is a figure which moves around and can you can control and as it goes on we find out there's other Ajian who aren't happy with the fact that they're kind of being tested on by weapons developers and things because imagine if you have somebody who can't die you keep you can keep trying all these weapons and gases and things and basically get treated horribly but there's a uh, a bad guy the man in the hat who's leader of the Ajian and he tries to start a civil war and it just goes on from there and the story keeps building it's got some good characters Got some irritating characters, but I find most anime, there's one or two characters you go, no, get them off. But uh, it's got some good action, some good twists, some moments where you go, what the hell? No, they can't do that. And then they do it. But it's uh, that's my number five, Adjun, Demi Human. And that's currently on Netflix in the UK. Okay. I've never even heard of that one, I have to say. So yeah. I may have to check Me it out. neither, but it's, uh, the guy I recommended it said it was excellent. So Okay. Yes. Very cool. I like it. Something a little different. Yeah. All right. Well, my number four is The Vow, <clears throat> which was a, uh, I believe, eight or nine episode miniseries. <clears throat> it was an original on HBO Max. So if you have access to that, if you watch the Justice League Zack Snyder cut, you can watch The Vow. Um, it is a documentary series about the Nexium uh, cult that was has been in the news a lot over the past oh, couple of years. Yeah. Uh, Ethan Neary, uh, the, whole, the whole branding people, the sex trafficking cult, all of that stuff, which is actually right in my ne neck of the woods. I actually worked with some of the people from the cult. Their building used to be around the corner from where I worked. Uh, I got to know a couple people who were involved with it. 
Um, and it was always something that our local newspaper covered quite heavily. So it's a story I followed for years and years and years. Uh, and then, of course, it became huge national and international news. Uh, and so this series, The Vow, what's really interesting about it, the reason they can make it eight or nine episodes is because one of the people who got out of the cult before it all blew up was Mark Vicente, who's a filmmaker, who made a movie called What the Bleep Do We Know, which I actually watched uh, several years ago when it came out. Um, and he filmed everything. Like Keith Raniere was such an egotist that he wanted him to film everything. Like oh, every, wow. every, every, everything. So like, and whatever he didn't film, he audio recorded. Like you will be blown away by what they have like on camera or on audio, like what people talking about and the situations and some of the weird things that happen so much stuff and then there's like text conversations they put on screen and everything like it's one of the most in-depth documentaries I've, I've ever seen um and it's fascinating to look at a cult like this for one but it's also does a really good job where like the whole first episode you're watching and they basically like tell you everything about this nexium organization to start with so it, it the whole first episode you're kind of like i don't see what's wrong with this like some of the stuff they're talking about is actually really great like some of these concepts are really good concepts, like what's wrong with it? And then at the very end of the first episode, you're kind of like, wait a second. And then it starts to get into all the dark side of stuff and what was going on behind the scenes. And it's utterly fascinating. Uh, it's, it's always been a fascinating story, but this this documentary series was is, is like watching a thriller. Uh, it really is. Um, and it's got some uh, really famous faces in it. Um, uh, 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 well, Sarah Edmondson, she's an actress who kind of became known because of this. Um, there's a couple of other, uh, 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 Allison Allison Mack, Mark. Big one. yeah, from Smallville who played Chloe. She's the big one who got really deeply involved. She's all over it. Um, Bonnie Pease, who played um, young Baru Skywalker in the prequel trilogy and has just got announced for being in yeah, he's in Kenobi. In Kenobi, oh, she's in that. Oh wow! She was, in it. she was one of the very first people that got out. She's married oh. to the filmmaker who uh, made the whole, uh, who recorded all this stuff. They met in the cult and they got married, and so their relationship is a big part of the center of it. Uh, and wow. she's really, really smart and really cool. So it's just fascinating. So it's called The Vow. It's on HBO Max. Can't recommend it highly enough. I do, I do like a good documentary, and it's. I, I was aware of that that cult and everything, but I did, I didn't realize the uh, the, the show. So that's. That's crazy. So they were they weren't even filming secretly. That was all given the go ahead to film. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's like high def, like film level quality footage. Like there's shots of him filming. It's like they're making a movie and a documentary about the making of the movie. Like Keith Raniere just wanted everything because his ego was just so so big. And he's a weird dude, man. You listen to him talk and you're like, I don't understand what the heck you're saying right now, man. It's very interesting. I really think anybody who's who likes that kind of like any kind of true crime type stuff or who thinks cults are interesting will find this one fascinating. Okay, yeah, that's uh, yeah, I'll have to give that one a watch. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay. Well, my uh, my number four is Psych. Yes. Uh, almost yes. all seasons of Psych, but I've awesome. got, got to the last season and I'm sort of don't want it to end, so I'm not quite finished watching it yet. But it uh, stars James Rodé Rodriguez and Jewel Hill. Maggie Lawson, and Timothy Oddmanson and all that stuff. And it's, uh, for those who haven't seen it, it's all about uh, a guy called Sean Spencer who's a bit of a slack, a bit of a layabout, but very clever. And his dad, played by Corbin Burnson, is a cop who trained him as a kid to be super observant, a bit like uh, Sherlock Holmes, mm -hmm. uh, to make uh, to put all these things together. Basically, he is, he's like, what if Sherlock Holmes was a, a slacker? That kind of thing. <laughs> uh, but it's it, it follows them, and he, 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 he calls in these... He called the police and lets them know that people have committed crimes and stuff, but they, they end up dragging him in saying, well, nobody else could know this, therefore you must have done the crime. He's going, no, no, I just noticed that I did this, and they don't believe him, but then he decides, well, if I pretend I'm psychic, maybe, you know, he, he does that, and they all believe him then, apart from a few of the cops, which is an ongoing thing. So he then decides to set up a detective agency, but he has to keep pretending that he's psychic. And as it goes on, it's just, it's funny, it's uh, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. There's always a pineapple in every episode, apparently. Yeah, yep. I haven't spotted them all, but it's just it's just funny. Uh, James Rodé Rodriguez and Jewel Hill, their chemistry is just yeah. brilliant. It's, it's it's nice just watching the two of them just riff off each other. They have catchphrases which I find myself saying in real life as well. <laughs> uh, you know that's right. <laughs> Come on, son. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> Sean, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking away. Yeah. Uh, but. <laughs> The whole episode is going to be this now, but right. uh, no, it's uh, it's just some great uh, homages as well. Homages, yes, yes. 
to uh, various uh, TV shows, films. There's a whole Twin Peaks episode. Yeah. There's one which just has Hitchcock bits and pieces all the way through. So many different ones. There's a great one which is basically Clue and involves mm -hmm. the same actors from Clue, which I remember watching going, they weren't Clue. This is a bit like, oh, my God, it's a Clue episode. It was, it's just really fantastic. Yeah, uh, It's worth watching if you like films, if you like TV. If you like comedy, if you like procedural, it's got everything. I'm yeah. just amazed. It took me so long to get into it. And I love the fact as well that they've gone on to do uh, some psych movies as well. Yep. I was going to ask, so was this your first time watching it then? Yeah, I've never seen it before. I'd seen, I think I'd seen the first episode a few years back. Okay. That I'd gone, oh, I like this, but then never carried on. But then right. this time I just went through it all. And so what's funny is it's season eight, eight, but... Uh, we, um, my wife and I are huge psych fans and we watched it all. originally. We watched the whole series and we love it. Um, but we thought my daughter would like it because again, we always, we watch a lot of shows with my daughter. I have a son also. He doesn't like television. I don't want people to think I only have a daughter. He just doesn't like TV. <laughs> but so we are always looking for shows that three of us can watch together. So we actually did start watching, uh, psych over the, over the pandemic. It didn't make my list because so far as the three of us, we've only gotten through the first season because we switched yeah, yeah. shows. And that was when we just started a couple months ago. So we watched the first season. My daughter loved it. My wife and I really enjoyed revisiting it. And then we moved on to another another show and then we're coming back to it. So it didn't make my list only because of that. Um, but I'm a big fan of Psych from way back. I mean, we watched it starting with the first episode when it broadcast and, and never missed it. It was It's yeah. terrific. So Such a good concept and the actors in it are just absolutely brilliant. Oh yeah, terrific. Great stuff. Good choice. All right. I like it. Okay. All right. My number three is a Netflix original that was maybe the talk of the town for a couple of months there, and it is Bridgerton. Oh, um, I've not seen that. Ah, man, I'll tell you, it's there's a reason why everyone was talking about it. Uh, based on a book that my wife is currently reading because we enjoyed the show so much. We just watched it recently. Uh, it was only eight episodes, but man, I, it was great. And I have to say, here's the thing about it. So we watched the, it. It's kind of like, um, you know, it's like a slightly dirtier version of Downton Abbey. That's not yeah. really a great comparison because it's not really like Downton Abbey, but it's not dissimilar either in a way. So, but um, we uh, we watched the first episode because everyone was talking about it, right? It was all over our social media feeds, and we were like, okay, I don't like to be left out, so we're gonna we're gonna give it a try. And we watched the first episode, and I wasn't blown away by it. And I said to my wife, I was like, you know, let's I'm gonna give it one more. And because she really liked it, and I was like, I'll give it one more episode. And if I'm not into it, you can watch it without me. And if I like it, then I'll I'll keep watching it. And by the end of the second episode, I was like, okay, well now I'm hooked, right? Like, <laughs> I, you know, the first one I, I I liked, but it didn't blow me away. By the end of the second episode, I was like, I'm in. And then just with every episode, I just was more and more involved in the characters. Um, and you know, it's basically. It's a fascinating look at this whole like courtship process in like 18th century England, where you know, like the girl. It's still like that. It's still like that now. What's that? It's still like that now. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, when the, when the girls come of age, they they bring them out, they court them, the guys dance with them, they propose to them after meeting them for like 45 minutes. It's very odd. Like that whole thing was <laughs> very weird. Um, but it's also very progressive, and I think it's very um, inspired by Hamilton. It has a multiracial cast um, in high society, which I don't necessarily know if that was historically accurate or not, but I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, but it's got the same type of thing. Uh, uh, you know, apparently I, this is my sweet spot, but really good drama. I mean, like there's an episode that'll have you in tears, but also lots of humor, really charismatic characters, um, almost entirely unknown actors, uh, at least on, at least for me on this side of the pond, um, but really great cast just, and the two leads um, whose names I have no idea, actually, I didn't pay attention to the credits all that much, but the two lead actors, the the, the Duke and and uh, this Daphne Bridgerton, uh, their chemistry is just phenomenal. Um, and uh, it's, it's really, really cool. Uh, so if you like, again, you like some of the soap opera, but but the, the high quality soap opera, and yeah. you're hearing about Bridgerton and you haven't watched it yet, it's only eight episodes, so it's an easy binge, but uh, I really enjoyed it. So okay. that's my number three. Excellent. Well, my number three is pretty much exactly the same as Bridgerton. It's Supernatural. <laughs> oh, yeah. Almost identical shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All 15, well, there's 15 seasons of it. I'm currently on season 14. I know I can't speak about, is it season 10, you know? Uh, we're now season 12. Season 12, okay, yeah. Uh, I won't go into spoilers, but if those of you who know, you know, but it's about uh, Sam and Dean Winchester who drive around America fighting monsters, uh, eating pie, the family business, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'd, I'd, again, it's like uh, with Psych. I'd seen the first episode years ago, and it was my kind of thing, you know, monsters, 
bit of detective work and things like that. But I'd never carried it on. But then, you know, pandemic. So we uh, watched it all, been going through it all, loving it. Uh, the characters, as well, the, fir the first five seasons, I think originally it was just going to be five seasons, wasn't it? And they work so well as a full story, an ongoing, big, long story arc going through. And if you just want to watch the first five seasons, that's great. And as it goes on, I mean, there's some ups and downs, like with every show, but on the whole, it's all really good. I mean, Castiel, the angel, is just brilliant. You know, he's constantly just going, ding, ding, <laughs> all the time. Uh, but there's so many good characters coming in and out of it, so many good monsters, the law building up. Uh, I, I just really like it and the way it changes. I love the fact as well that pretty much every big bad that they face in the next season has been brought on by Sam and Dean going, you don't die. And yeah, basically they cause everything, but then they clean it up and then cause the next thing. But it's that's all part of the charm. Uh, I love the fact it gets meta in so many ways. Yes. Where there's like one episode where they end up being thrown out into a different dimension and f end up finding out that they're in the bodies of the actors who play them in a show called Supernatural, which I was going, what? That's brilliant. <laughs> that's uh, some other good bits as well. Uh, there's, oh, my favorite episode was uh, one called Baby, which was the fourth episode in season 11, mm -hmm. which is, it's all told from the viewpoint of the car. They drive a, oh, an amazing car. Chevy Impala. That's it, Chevy Impala. They drive that and Dean loves it. It was his dad's car, but he calls it Baby. But this whole episode where the camera doesn't leave the car, even though Sam and Dean do. And it's it's basically them doing a pretty standard monster hunting mission for them. But the fact is just, you just hear them chatting. There's a, You get to see a bit more about the day-to-day -day life as well when they're in the car. But I just love the fact that they said, oh, well, let's stick the camera in the car and it doesn't leave there. And they're probably thinking halfway through going, why did we do this? But it worked <laughs> really well. But there's so many good things where they just, let's try this, let's do that. It may not always work, but I just I just love it. It's a good story. Brilliant characters, and they evolve and change. Although Sam and Dean sometimes I just wish they'd sit down and talk. Yeah. And yeah. Just, <laughs> no, just anyway. Anyway, but that's uh, yeah, supernatural. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all wraps up. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm, my 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 wife and I both are, and my and my daughter are all diehard supernatural fans. We started watching it with episode one, um, and watched it for ten years nonstop, never missed it. And then we missed a few episodes, and you can't watch that show out of order, basically, in my opinion. You can, but I don't like to. And so we fell behind, and we took a couple of years off. Um, but now we're catching up, and we're in season twelve. We're watching it with my daughter, and um, it's to me one of the greatest shows of all time. So when I tell people if I have to do like my top three TV shows, it is is Supernatural, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and Friends. And Supernatural is definitely, I mean, it's just one of my absolute favorites. So I'm glad that you are finally uh, yeah. in the know. Because I think we've talked about it a few times on the podcast before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Phil, you got to watch Supernatural. It's great. Yeah. Uh, so I was always aware of it. I wasn't sure what the basic thing was. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to actually get into it. And just, it's, I mean, some of it's just absolutely ridiculous. But it's just, the, the two leads, uh, Anson, no? It's uh, Jared Padalecki and Jensen Ackles. Jensen, that's it. Yeah, uh, they're just they're just so good in the roles. Yeah, uh, just. Uh, but I do like, and I, I do like the fact it's they don't mind taking the Mickey out of themselves. Like the, with the bit, there's the episode where they go to a school. Oh my god, I was just going to mention that too. It's one of my yeah. favorite episodes. Yeah, the point is they go to the school because somebody's been murdered, and they realize that the school's putting on a school play. Uh, it's a musical based on. Oh yeah, because based on this series of books that were written by another character, which was basically telling the whole life of Dean and Sam, but the. Dean and Sam are then confronted by this school stage uh, with the cast uh, of school schoolgirls playing all the characters and they're seeing moments of their life from that. And it just it comments on the whole the whole thing that when fans feel like characters should get together, it comments on all that, it should all this. And it's just and there's one point where Jensen Eccles just does a brilliant dry look to the camera, which is just fantastic. But there's yeah, so many great moments. Yep, that. for sure. That's great. Can't go wrong with Supernatural. Excellent. All right. So my number two then is The Unicorn, uh, a sitcom, a Fox sitcom. I believe it's Fox. I could be wrong on that. because we. Oh, all is this the Walton Goggins one? Well. It is the Walton Goggins yeah, one. Yeah. Yes. Now I'm a big Walton Goggins fan, but, I, you know, he's usually playing the bad guy. So I was like, how's yeah, it going yeah. in like a rom-com? Uh, you know, sitcom, uh, but it's fantastic. It is super, super funny. And, and, and I could never figure out because I didn't watch it why it was called the unicorn. And basically what it is, he plays 
a dad who's it's about a year after his wife died and he has two daughters like 12 and 14 um and he's got two other couple friends and you know there were three couple friends they all have kids that's how they met and everything um but then his wife dies so now he's single and his friends are always trying to hook him up with people and basically what they say is you're like the unicorn because you know most guys on like dating websites are either divorced and bitter or they're single for a reason because they're jackasses right but he's a widower and he hasn't been dating and he's been was only with the one woman for 20 years so he's like a, a unicorn he's like magical he's like the thing every woman is looking for um that's why the show is called the unicorn but okay okay here's the thing about it that i will say uh as somebody if you're like 21 and you're not in a serious relationship, I don't know if that show is going to be funny to you. Okay. If you have been in a long-term relationship or especially if you've been married for like 20 years, like I have, and you have kids, it is hysterical because they, whoever writes the show clearly writes it from experience of being in a long-term relationship and having kids because the humor is dead on. I, I always bring up the scene. There's two characters and they're hiding from somebody. And the guy's like, why are we, the husband's like, why are we hiding? And the wife is like, that's Kathy. And he's like, who? And she's like, you know, Kathy, she always comes to preschool late. And she always had the thing on her car and her husband has a mustache. And he's like, I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And my wife and I were, were like crying. Cause we've had that same conversation like a hundred times where she'll be like, oh, you know, that's Bob. I'm like, who's Bob? She's like, you know, Bob, you remember that time he did the thing? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like those types of moments are so perfectly captured in this show that if you, if you have a kid yet you, you have a, a spouse or a long-term partner or anything like that like you've had these conversations before and they just hit the nail on the head so well um and it it's just so funny but like i said I, if you don't have that experience i don't know how funny it'll be to you um yeah. not to say it wouldn't be but i don't know for sure um but especially if you're a parent or you've been married a long time, like you, you really have to watch it. And it's great to see Walton Goggins playing a nice guy for a change and not. Yeah, it is a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, yeah, he's great. A tough guy. Yeah. And the supporting cast is really good too. Um, uh, uh, Rob Cordry is in it, who's always funny. Uh, Michaela Watkins is terrific. If anybody knows her, she was on Saturday Night Live for like a season, has been in a bunch of other things. I really like her. Uh, there's a couple other actors who I didn't know before this, but they're terrific. Um, it's a great show. It's a very, very funny. So The Unicorn is my number two. Brilliant. And that's that's made reminding me. I want to uh, rewatch Justified. That's just yeah. Gone. It's another classic. Yeah, I think that's all on Amazon as well because I watched the first three seasons of that. I need to watch. The yeah, rest of love it. Justified. Excellent. Though, good pick. Uh, I don't know if that's. I don't think I can get to watch that anywhere over here at the minute. But anyway. yeah, I don't know. Season one's on Netflix here in the US, and season one and two are on Paramount Plus. Okay. Okay. Well, my number two, it's two shows, but they're both related. It's uh, Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and Star Wars Rebels. Nice. Two animated shows set in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, created by Dave Filoni, and I just think it's just absolutely amazing. It's uh, obviously Attack of the Clones, episode two, was a film a lot like The Rise of Skywalker. You've seen it, or you haven't. Uh, but the Star Wars, Star Wars, The Clone Wars just builds on that. Uh, carry you follow Anakin Skywalker and Obi Wan Kenobi as they battle the Separatist forces, and it just it just builds and builds and builds and fills in all the background of what uh, Senator Palpatine's doing, uh, what the uh, what the clone troopers are doing. The fact you get so many characters out of the clone troopers is just brilliant, uh, and I recommend watching it in chronological order because when it was broadcast, for some reason they. It jumps around a lot, especially in the earlier seasons. So you can sort of go and get one big battle ends, and then the next one's nothing to do with that. And then even like a, a full season afterwards, it's like carrying on from that battle we'd seen in previous previous season. But uh, chronological order, you see the characters develop and grow and change, and because uh, it's 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 sort of well, people say that the first season in particular is quite childish. And it is very much more like a cartoon of like, oh, let's let's do the fights. The, bad guy, uh, the good guy's going to win. The bad guys. But as it goes on, it start, starts delving more into uh, not all Jedi's are good, uh, and what the what the Jedi are, are doing may not be the right thing. And you just start seeing as well all the back and forth between the what Palpatine's doing and and how it's affecting different characters. And you see. Well, you see so many different things, and it's it just builds and builds. And also, then when we go into watching uh, Revenge of the Sith, it it improves that film quite a lot as well. Because instead of you just seeing Anakin going, "Oh, I'm Anakin, I'm Anakin," oh no, I'm evil, 
uh, you, you see the build-up. You could see why, because in through the Clone Wars, he's qu constantly questioning why they're doing it and trying to make people go on. Well, this isn't right. We, we should be doing it this. Should be doing it that way. But it just it builds his character and just makes it all so much better. But it's I was I was blown away with how good it was. And the, the last season, the last few episodes, uh, which one, uh, which are happening at the same time as Revenge of the Sith, mainly, are just absolutely fantastic. Some really, you could watch that on the big screen. The last two, I think it's the last two. Or three episodes of that uh, big fight with Ahsoka and somebody who not has legs. Um, just in case people haven't seen it, but you know yeah. what I mean. Big fight there, uh, and it's just absolutely amazing. And then you got Star Wars Rebels, which is a different animation style, harkens back to lots of the original Ralph McQuarrie concept art. But then that builds with the uh, shows how the rebellion started to build, going up against the the uh, the Empire. You get some great characters. Uh, and a great ship, the Ghost, and mm. some of those, well, the ship in particular, with some names have been dropped in Rogue One and things like that. And then, obviously, we have Ahsoka, the character from Clone Wars, who appears in Rebels. And for those of you who've seen The Mandalorian, she shows up in that. And if you're enjoying The Mandalorian or haven't seen Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels, go back and watch that because then you'll go, oh, oh, that's this, that's that. And you're going, Dave Filoni, you clever, you clever chap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just... It's just amazing storytelling, some great animation. I can understand some of the criticism Star Wars Rebels have for some of the, the character design and the skinny lightsabers, but it, it brings in Grand Admiral Thrawn, uh, which, again, people who watched the Mandalorian episode with Ahsoka in and heard Thrawn being mentioned but didn't know about him, that will make a lot more sense as well. But, yeah, yeah two, it's just take a bit of time to get through them all, but it's well worth it. And if you're watching the first few episodes of Clone Wars, just stick with it because it just... It becomes this grand epic tale, which is what. Well, that's where I'm at with um, Clone Wars. I've only watched the first few, and it's something I keep meaning to get back to. I just haven't yet. But I love Rebels. Big fan of Rebels. I know there are some Star Wars fans out there who don't love it, but I think it's terrific. Um, and Clone Wars is on my list. I watched. I did like the first few episodes. I just haven't. Uh, you know, I'm trying to watch it with my kids and trying to find yeah. time to get them to watch stuff is not easy because again, my son doesn't like television. So, um, all right, good. So my number. One, um, and I don't think ours are the same. We, for those who pe people who are new to this, we we've sometimes occasionally would strike on the same thing for our number ones. But I don't know if you've yeah. watched the show or not. But it is an Apple Plus original, which I know limits um, some people's ability to watch it. But it is. I know the show, and I've not seen it, but I've I've seen you commenting on it. On all right, the, it's on Ted that. Lasso, um, quite possibly the greatest show of all time. No exaggeration. So here's the thing, guys. Apple Plus is like five dollars. Ted Lasso is a half hour show. There's 10 episodes. Pay the five bucks like you're doing a rental fee. Get your Apple Plus for a month and then binge Ted Lasso. It is the greatest show ever. I cannot tell you how great it is. Um, so it's Jason Sudeikis. Uh, he plays an American college football coach who gets brought over to England to coach a, a soccer team or a football team, if football. you will. Football. Um, and uh, – well, because I called him a football coach, which is what he is. I want to make sure people know that, that there's a difference. So um, it, it will make you laugh so hard you cry. And then in the same episode, it'll make you cry because you cry because it's so moving. It is co-created by Bill Lawrence, who who also created Scrubs. And if you're a Scrubs fan, you know how that show was so good at being just over-the-top hysterical and then also had really moving moments. And Ted Lasso has perfected that formula. Um, it is one of the funniest shows I've ever seen, and yet it has this this heart to it that is unlike anything I've seen in almost any other sitcom. It has such a this character of Ted Lasso is just such a an optimist and such a good, decent human being. Like it makes you want watching Ted Lasso makes you want to make the world a better place. Like that's how good this show is. Like you just it makes you be like, yeah, I want to be I want to be Ted Lasso. I want to live in the world Ted Lasso lives in. It is phenomenal. We watched it. it all the way through and then watch most of it again a second time with my wife's family to get them into it. It is absolutely brilliant. I'm telling you, it's worth the five dollars. You will thank me if you spend that money and you watch Ted Lasso. One quick note on it, not appropriate for children. So don't watch it with the kids. My daughter has not seen it. Uh, she's not quite old enough yet. It is, it is an R-rated show, mostly for language, but just also some content stuff. But um, just I honestly think it's one of the greatest shows of all time. And it's only one season in. So I can't wait to see what happens with it when it comes back. Oh, that's so good because yeah. I, I, I keep seeing people saying how good it is. But because uh, when I saw the trailer originally, I was thinking, ah, oh, yeah, looks funny. But uh, oh, it's good to know. And I did, I do like Scrubs as well. 
Yeah. And I just yeah. say scrub some of the ups and downs. I mean, the ones with Brendan Fraser, some of the episodes with him. Right. Wow. Yeah. 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 This is like that episode, but like to the nth degree. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely, uh, I'll try and get that watched at some point. Yeah. Okay, good choice. Uh, but my number one is uh, it's another animated show. I've been on a bit of an animation thing, but it's uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Really? Yes, because uh, I'd, I'd heard things about this for a while. People saying how good it was. Then there was the M Night Sham Shyamalan uh, film, which is not good. But uh, I'd, I'd seen the first episode again. I think it must have been about five or six years ago. I watched the first episodes of lots of things, and obviously, it didn't take. <laughs> right. uh, but. Uh, this during the pandemic put it on again started watching it and it's i was going well it's all right yeah the first couple of episodes and then it just it just you go on this journey with these characters these kids in this world which is fully realized uh and it's just it's just done so well the characters some of them are a bit grating but there's a reason why they are and they build and they change and there are moments like you're saying you'll uh, like with ted lasso where you're laughing out loud and then a bit later on you could be crying because uh a guy called Uncle Iro, and there's, there's one episode where he's just getting trying to get some ingredients to make tea, and it's quite funny. But then when you realize why he's got the tea, and you're just, you're just in tears at the end of it. But it's just, and the story's building up these the Fire Nation is attacking the rest of the, this world, and uh, the Avatar is the only one who could stop them. And he's going on trying to learn the abilities that he needs to to defeat them, but he's just a kid and he feels the pressure constantly on him to do this. But they have other adventures unrelated, but it just builds and builds and builds and and it just it's told beautifully and it's just it's just the uh I think it's three seasons, three or four, I can't remember now, but uh that's the story. And it's just it's just absolutely brilliant. And there's good callbacks. There's one episode where they I go to this place near the, in the last season where they watch a play based on their adventures, and it's a bit like supernatural a bit, but it's they find out that uh it just it just comments on the whole thing they've seen. Also comments on some of the criticism earlier episodes had as well. And it's just it's it's just brilliant. There's great action scenes as well. Great characters. There's a character called Toph. She's just hilarious and very snarky and things like that. But yeah, it's just if you haven't seen it but you've heard about it, go and watch it because it hit Netflix in the, the middle of last year. And it's considering it's about it's about seven or eight years old, I think, isn't it? It's an old show. Yeah, yeah, it's been around it, for a while. It, it was like the top of uh, it was top of Netflix's top ten for a long time. But right. it's 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 a cartoon, yeah, for kids, yes, but also for like so many cartoons are. Mm -hmm. it's, it's if you're an adult and watching it as well, it's a it's a good. Again, it's people trying to do what's right in the world and try to make the world a better place. Yeah, I've watched the first few episodes of it, and I really liked it. I just haven't ever gotten back to it, but I didn't realize it was on Netflix. I don't know if it is over here or not off the check, but um, I definitely want to revisit that because it is high quality. I know that the fans are very, very devoted, so a yeah. uh, great choice. Yeah. All right, there you go. So those are our top five shows we binged during the pandemic. Hopefully that'll give you guys some ideas. If you're still looking for stuff to binge, that'll give you some uh, some choices. Yeah. All right. Know what you were, you've been binging, um, so we can add them to yeah. our list. Yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys as well. What are some of the things that you guys like? All right, so uh, we're down to our last segment. We're running a little bit long, but that's okay. It's our first time, um, and so we'll, we'll make this this last segment uh, fairly quick. This is ATE Recommends, where Phil and I share a couple of things that uh, we have really been enjoying lately, which I know we just did that with our top five list, but our top five lists aren't always this current. Sometimes it's like top five movies from the fifties and that obviously wouldn't yeah. be as current. So uh, Phil, why don't you start this one? What are some, what are yeah. some things that you like? Have I been have got a couple of things, both, both book based, but the first one is a, uh, it's a series of books, which I'd, uh, Daniel Green on YouTube, he reviews fantasy and sci-fi books he'd mentioned, but it's one called, it's a series of books called the Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. Uh, just uh, don't know how that shows you. There you go. That's the first book. Uh, it's like a novella, I suppose. They're only like uh, hundred odd pages each, but it's it all. It's basically following this this android who's broken his programming and he has free will, but he's also a security agent. But he's basically full of full of human angst and anxiety. He doesn't like it when his clients are talking to him directly. He likes looking at them through the CCTV and himself. It's just a bit like uh, Marvin the Paranoid Android from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Right. But, but it just, because it's it's talking about the human condition, basically, but it's funny, uh, action-packed. Uh, the murder bot, because you hear the murder bot, you think, oh, that's going to be a bit weird. But it's, uh, 
that's what, that's what he calls himself. He's trying to find out his past because he apparently he killed a lot of humans, but he doesn't quite remember why. Uh, but it's just, it's great. There's four novellas, and then there's a, I think the, a new novel's just come out, which I've just got, but I, I read the first one on Kindle, and then so you could buy all four in a box set. So I bought them all and just devoured them. It's been good. Uh, this pandemic, I've been getting into reading, but that's uh, that's that. And should I do the next one, or do you want to do Yeah, go one? ahead. So you, do okay. your, you do your two, and I'll do my two. And, and the other one is a new uh, Dungeons & Dragons source book. Oh. Well, no, sorry, this is an adventure book, Candlekeep Mysteries. Yeah. It's a series of, uh, I think it's 13 or 14 adventures, uh, set, which all start in Candlekeep or around. They're all based on books. And there's some good ones. There's some good fun ones. Some weird ones as well, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, inflicting some of them on my DMD group. But uh, <laughs> that, that's only just come out, and it's uh, it's worth taking a look. You can get it on DMD Beyond as well. But uh, yes, Candlekeep Mysteries and Murderbot. Nice. Uh, can I just say they look really good on? on I know it's one of the things yeah. we couldn't do on the audio version was yeah, yeah. Uh, for people to see. So I, I like this <laughs> part of the the component of the visual component. So exactly, and you can get them in all places that sell books. There you go. All right, well, mine are also reading-based, actually, so I guess, but we've been talking movies for a while, so it's nice, and TV shows. It's nice to get something to prove we also can read. We can just sort of watch stuff. Um, I have two graphic novel recommendations I want to make, and the first one is um, called Aster of Pan. It's a big one, um, and it's beautiful, too. Oh, wow, that's cool. Um, I, guess I actually supported it on Kickstarter. It's by a French artist named Merwan, but I believe it's now available in stores. It's from um, Magnetic Press, so you can get it the same thing wherever books are sold. So basically, it's kind of like if you crisscross the Hunger Games and Dodgeball. Um, it's sort of this like dystopic future, and there's this sort of dispute between these territories that gets solved through this, this dodgeball-type game. Um, so it's more serious than the Dodgeball movie, but it's definitely not. <laughs> Curious as Hunger Games. It's definitely got a little bit of a lighter tone to it, but um, the artwork in it, that's a, a cover by Peach Momoko, who's a very popular artist, but the artwork inside, not a great page to show, um, is really, really, I know it's hard to see, but it's, the artwork is, is just phenomenal the story is great i you know i supported it because i'm a bit of a kickstarter junkie i like the look of it they had some neat extras um and i finally got around reading it a couple weeks ago and i was just blown away by how great it is so aster of pan amazing graphic novel i can't recommend it highly enough and big for your it's a 30 dollar cover price i'm sure you can find it cheaper than that but it's like the 200 pages it's a big size it's got like the soft touch cover right. um i really love that looks, it that looks nice and then this one, man, I, I can't recommend this one highly enough. This is a graphic novel called The Wrong Earth. It's from a relatively new comic company called Ahoy Comics. Okay. And I, I'm going to tell you the concept of it. And if this doesn't make you want to read it, I don't know what will. Okay. okay so you bring, got, bring it, Mike. Bring all it. right. You've got two versions of the same superhero on parallel Earths, right? Dragonfly, the Dragonfly, and Dragonfly Man. Basically, you've got your Dark Knight Returns Batman. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have your Adam West Batman on separate Earths. And they accidentally switch places. Oh, okay. okay. So you've got your grim and gritty, like murdering Batman on a world full of colorful villains who bake people into pies and put them on elaborate traps and nobody gets killed and they have giant bubblegum balls. And then you have your like Adam West Batman trapped in like this nightmarish hell world where like his sidekick is dead and like the cops think he's a criminal and everyone's trying to kill him. It's amazing it is such a great concept and they pull it off so well and each world just really captures like the adam west world's all just colorful goofy villains like the you know the everyone all the cops are kind of inept but they're just bumbling good guys and everything is peachy and keen but he like will kill people but then everyone's like that oh you couldn't do that you're this great you're dragonfly and then the other one there's the squeaky clean guy on this world where it's just like criminals it's like a rundown nasty grimy world uh, it is phenomenal uh, i can't it's even like tell it, i had reason it's, like it. it. it's like if ben affleck's batman swap places with adam west batman yeah basically but but even grittier okay. in the, on the ben affleck version maybe christian bale i don't know yeah definitely so anyway it's called the wrong earth i Honestly, can't even tell you how much I love reading this book. Uh, this is the first mini series, uh, and then there's a second mini series that's going on right now in monthly form. So, highest possible recommendation if you're a comic fan. How much is that? Ahoy Publishing. Ahoy Comics. Yep. Ahoy it's Com a Empire, who's been around for years and years, has written some great stuff and uh, really great artwork from Jamal Igle. Um, so, yeah, just really fantastic. So there you go. Those are my two recommendations for the week. I like I like both of them. I may try and pick them up. Yeah, I think you'll really enjoy them. Mm -hmm. 
good stuff. I would like to you, but you, you know, you live in a whole separate continent, so. Oh, uh, no, I wish I had a copy now so we could pretend to pass them to each other. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. A little, a little camera trickery. Here you go, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that looked pretty good, actually, though. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, that is our episode then. Um, and uh, I know we went a little bit longer than our advertised half hour, but it's our first time. We'll trim it down next time. So the plan is to be back in two weeks at this time uh, on a Monday, uh, 530 U.S. time, 1030 England time, and wherever else you may live, whatever time it is near you. Um, we're going to be broadcasting live again, but all the video will be hosted on all of our um, channels and YouTubes and all that stuff. And uh, if everything goes well, we will also be making an audio version available. So if you're already subscribed to After the Ending, um, it will pop up in your audio feed, which will be pretty neat. And you can listen to this if you uh, want to. Although if you're at this point of the video, you've probably already watched it. So I don't know if you want to listen to it again, but you know what I'm saying. Because so. it's just that good. That's right. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. The plan right now is to do this every 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 two weeks until we're kind of on our feet and see how things are going. Uh, and then we may increase the frequency or maybe leave it at two every two weeks. But we figure better that than, than being gone for a year like we were. So yeah. um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. I know I certainly did. Phil, I did as well. Did. It was good fun. It was uh, thank you for putting up with our first episode nerves, maybe. And uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, we we did we did go over long, but we were talking about we were talking about binging shows, so it kind yeah. of fits. Yeah, it fits, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, great. So uh, I think what we'll do is we'll wrap it up then, and um, this will be the the end of the episode. But thank you guys for who, who watched and who commented. Um, and if you're watching this after the live broadcast, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be having more soon. And um, yeah, that's it. So we'll let you guys go. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching after the ending. That's a whole new thing to say. I've never said yeah. that before. And we'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Yes. Take care. Bye-bye.